Well, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Harry Brelsford with SMB Nation with Winter Quarter MSP Tech Talk, our popular academic series. And I am coming to you live from Bainbridge Island just outside Seattle. And I'll, I'll, I'll get back to the good evening part in just a minute um, when I talk to our first guest. But uh, today is a pretty darn exciting uh, episode in terms of, I, I, I guess if I had to frame it up, sort of the uh, voice, the telephony component of Office 365 and, and how we play in that reindeer game. So um, Matt Landis, why don't you quickly say hi, you're going to be featuring that and maybe if you want to uh, briefly introduce yourself, where are you located, sir? Then I'm going to have a chit chat with Barry. Okay, yes, Matt Landis here, and we're just, uh, we're in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. It's farmland. We're a little east, or a little west of Philadelphia, so not far from Philadelphia, and uh, I uh, started Landis Technologies, and we, like like Harry said, we really specialize in the voice component of that, and uh, now we have Microsoft Teams coming down the road, but uh, Microsoft Voice and add-ons for Microsoft Voice, so go ahead. All righty. Well, we'll get back to you in a second. So, folks, uh, if you know our format with the MSP Tech Talk quarterly series, we fancy ourselves being a lot like public TV and public radio, where we're uh, committed to delivering high quality content, and that's made possible by our underwriters. And so we shout out to Fortinet, Cynix, and SureWeb. We're going to chat with each of those as we go through the process. A little bit of housekeeping. Uh, uh, listeners, that, that please, um, you will need to have your computer audio to hear the videos, and I'll be sure to mention that as we go. Uh, use the questions feature to ask all of your questions, and then check out the handout sections. And with that said, we also have episodes of the MSP Tech Talk uh, lecture number five, uh, and six coming up in the next two successive Wednesdays. You'll certainly receive notification of that. So, so Barry, um, I want to bring you in with that, that earlier comment I made when I said good evening, because it is evening where you're at. Why don't you tell everybody uh, where you're uh, joining us from and assure them, sir, that you actually have water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm in Johannesburg, South Africa, um, and yeah, we're 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 about 1,800 uh, kilometers from Cape Town, which is the place that's suffering at the moment with uh, lack of water. So um, their their D day at the moment, or their, their zero day, as they call it, is um, I believe an end of May now. So. Oh my, oh my! And before we got on the air, I believe you said it's 10 p.m. at night. Still today. <laughs> yep. Yep. Still the seventh. Oh. 10 p.m. Okay, well, I appreciate you joining us. Jenny and I have uh, certainly enjoyed a, a few trips to South Africa to, to tell the small business server story and some other stories. So um, thank you for joining us. So my, my question's real simple, that what, what we wanted to do with uh, the Fortinet moment, as it were, is get a partner on and you know, tell us, tell us like it is, maybe a little bit about your business model, how you weave Fortinet into the fabric. And then if you could give me a tale from the, the tales from the trenches, my friend, maybe you got a hospital or a school district or something. We've all got stories. And, and I just, I, I love that as the partner to partner form, format. So um, what's your business model and how do you work with Fortinet? Okay, so we're we're in we're actually part of a much bigger company that does a lot of other uh, ICT sort of uh, services, fiber, voice, that sort of thing. Our particular area is is a managed provider, managed service provider, and as part of that, we provide the entire internet infrastructure for the customer. So because of the other part of the business, we do the fiber for them, we do their voice for them, but we also do the security both on the on the edge at the firewall and then further down in the on the um, on the endpoints itself. And um, for us, for probably close on 10 years now, Fortinet's been the the way the place to go for security for our customers. We actually we came from the SPS space when when it had a firewall built into it and when they discontinued that product, we went and had a look at what we could what we could find. And Fortinet was the the product that we came across. Um, 
So for us, it's what we really like about it is that it, we can integrate so many different things to it. So we can have Wi-Fi 48 piece integrated into the firewall, controlled by one central location. You don't have to go get a firewall controller to control your your access points. Uh, that's built into the firewall. You can very easily do uh, different networks, you know, a guest network, a mobile phone network, and a normal Wi-Fi network. Um, you can do guest access on the Wi-Fi, that sort of thing. And that's why it's been so powerful for us. And, and recently in the last you know, couple of months with all of the ransomware attacks that are happening, um, being able to natively on the firewall block access to botnets is incredibly powerful for us. Um, yeah, botnet with the whole ransomware sort of uh, uh, conversation isn't just about the firewall, but it, it does help quite a bit just to get that extra level of, of uh, protection. Yeah. Yeah. And do you, do you have any specific verticals that you serve? Like, you know, I don't know, you know, manufacturing or pharmaceuticals or what, 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 what reindeer games do you play in? <laughs> we tend to, we don't have a specific vertical, but we do deal with a lot of financial services businesses um, from small sort of five man um, uh, financial services companies to, you know, 80 odd user um, financial advisor companies, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay, great. And if someone was listening today and, and, and thinking about becoming a, uh, a 40 net partner, um, I, I, I guess I'm hearing that, that overall you have a high level of satisfaction with the relationship of 40 net. And maybe this question is concerning the, uh, the, the, the business side. You, you spoke eloquently to the technical side, but, um, you know, sounds like if they've been a partner for as long as they have, it must it must be you know, business. It has to work for both parties. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so for us, from from a business perspective, being a partner, obviously we get a we get a uh, there's a price break based on your your partnership level. Uh, we are a platinum partner, so we get the best price break you can, which which obviously helps us because it it, it helps us be competitive. Um, we can also. Uh, self to channel using that model um, and the other side of the the, the 40 net um, partnership is actually the, the the training that you get the um, the uh, self-paced training that they provide on the on the partner portal which is incredibly important because you have to have a certain level of, of, of skills and, and exams to get your partner status yeah yeah absolutely so uh, where could people if you don't mind if uh, f find out more about your company if if you're able to share your web URL and then you know what's coming is they're gonna hit you up when they come for their safari in South Africa but that's <laughs> for another day <laughs> I'm more than welcome <laughs> um, so it's uh, www.voxvox.co.za Okay, great. And Jenny, if you could make a note, we'll kick that out in the uh, the thank you email that goes out to everybody. So, so Barry, I totally appreciate your time. And if uh, a, a beer is in your future this late evening down there, go and enjoy. You're welcome to stay on. But thank you very much, sir. I totally appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. We have a poll up on the question. Uh, while uh, Barry gets his, uh, his affairs in order, uh, the poll is, do you offer security services and products as a significant part of your business? Um, while you're answering that, what's really cool, you guys, and I, I, I can speak towards the U.S., maybe I can even ask the Cynix individual later um, uh, uh, about their reach, but in the U.S., uh, Fortinet is distributed by Cynix, and so we've got some pretty cool synergy going on with our community sponsors. Uh, Jenny, go ahead and close out the poll if you don't mind. And we have almost a split field. The question was, do you offer security services and products as a significant part of your business? Yes, 53%, no, 47 Matt Landis, why don't you take back that talking stick, my friend? Let's jump into the good stuff. The people are they're hungry for knowledge. And we Matt, you know, while while you're grabbing the talking stick, we probably don't do as great a job as we should with the voice component. So thank you for joining us and, and just beware, we, we may dupe you into a return visit like summer quarter, okay? So <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we always have things to talk about. And what you just said there, not so good at voice. Voice is a special beast, and uh, it, it takes some special knowledge. So that's a very, very insightful comment, actually. All right. Let's rock, my friend. Cool. Okay. So we have uh, CJ Martin. I, I will be mostly presenting. 
and uh, I'm Matt Landis, as already said. And CJ Martin is going to be a co-presenter. He's going to help maybe with the slide or so, and also with the Q and A. Very deep. He spends his every day inside Skype for Business Voice. So a good person to have with us. And just talking about Landis Technologies a little bit, we have two pieces to our organization. We have a deployment consulting group, so helping people deploy uh, Skype for Business and Microsoft Teams Enterprise Voice. And we also uh, have an add-on solutions group, which uh, Harry was kind of uh, nodding towards that. He saw us at Inspire and Ignite. I forget which one it was, but we usually are presenting on the Expo Hall. And we provide a se several voice products that are add-ons to Skype for Business or Microsoft Teams. An attendant console, a contact center, we also do recording, and some other add-ons for, for Skype for Business. But a little more about Landis Technologies, we're a Microsoft Gold partner. We have a long partnership with Microsoft on phone system features. Uh, we've really been, um, I am personally an MVP, so that means, what that means, part of what that means is I spend a week uh, near Harry Brelsford in Seattle at Redmond. Um, we also have an yeah. Hey, and Matt, if, if you don't mind going back to that era, I think we either met or solidified our friendship, I'm going to offer during the response point era, the, the small um, business phone system. I have a slide. I'll get to that, and I want to talk a little okay. more about it. <laughs> All right, I'm jumping the gun. Please not continue. A problem. I'll go back on yep. mute. <laughs> not, not a problem. I, I actually want to revisit that. So another thing about Landis Technology, we actually have a network of over 200 uh, premium Microsoft voice partners around the globe. So we work with a lot of partners. Not only do we do consulting directly, we also work with a lot of partners uh, who resell our add-ons. And in some cases, we actually assist them uh, with uh, voice expertise. We have customers in in six continents. Am I getting that correct? I don't know if that's a – every continent except Antarctica and 50 countries uh, we sell products into, and we have uh, several certified for Skype for Business products. But talking about S Harry Brelsford, SMB Nation, and why Landis Technologies ever even got into phone systems, it all started, Harry, with uh, Microsoft Response Point. Um, there we go. <laughs> in the good old days. And what time frame? What time frame was that? Am I thinking 2009? Am I saying that, that's about the time it left? Okay, so no, I'm happy to do some gap filling because uh, I, I I was there. In fact, you, you know what, Matt? I just traded a uh, a personal email with uh, Ben Brower in from the Microsoft Research Team. You may remember yep. some of the names. Just today, we 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 traded notes. But um, to answer your question, it for me it would have been late '06. And yep. and and the oh early oh seven and then I wrote the book in oh eight, and then sadly uh, end of life I'm going to say end of oh nine certainly early ten it was end of life but ha ha had yep. about a three three four year run and then we well life happened <laughs> yep you got it well you know the interesting thing is you you know when Microsoft started talking about response point phone system we were at the point in our company where we said that's a really interesting. It's a piece we should do. We should do the voice piece. And so response got me interested, and, and we started doing our own legwork. And, and, and what we thought is from our market research, it wasn't quite hitting the spot. It didn't quite. And so we were holding off. We're saying, we'll keep watching it. We'll keep watching it. And then, well, you know, you wrote the book, and we kept watching it. And it didn't – it wasn't – Microsoft also came to the conclusion it's not quite hitting the spot. So then our attention kind of, we, we kind of diverted a little bit. We looked at Asterisk. We looked at some Windows-based uh, IP phone systems and then started watching Link in that time frame. That was like the 2010, uh, 2000, am I saying that right, 2010-ish time frame, and said, you know what, yep, Link, yep, yep. it's starting to look like a solution that we can dig into. Um, and so we did. And the rest is we really dug into voice with Microsoft and really help people figure that piece out. Um, did things like wrote a book on Skype for Business, how to implement Link Server, I should say, and then also Skype for Business Server, which was really, really uh, seems to be have really been useful. And since then, we've been helping people with Microsoft Voice Solutions. So thank you, Harry, for uh, getting us triggered there.
There you go. All righty. So another thing. So we're going to talk about how you can you can really land your voice solution, your phone system, so that it's as cool as SpaceX's dual booster landing. I don't know how many of you saw that yesterday. That was just the most impressive thing I've seen in a long time. Just those two boosters just landing nicely side by side. We won't talk anything about the core booster or what happened to that one, but that dual landing was just impressive. And what we would like to help you is give you steps so that you can implement uh, a voice system equally smooth and equally impressive. And that includes a couple steps. Uh, envisioning what solution, you know, be clear on what you want to end up with. And then assessing where you are at technically, um, deploying it, and enabling it, go live day, you know, getting that right. And then something people forget is that monitor the solution on an ongoing basis, which just rolls nicely into, I know SMB Nation, Harry, that, that, um, that having an ongoing monitoring and I'm not catching the word, but having a solution to take care of customers on an ongoing basis. Yeah, so, yeah. So diving in, determining what you see. So a first step in getting a good solution is knowing what you want. You know, what pieces do you all need? Do you need instant messaging and presence? If someone's really traditional, they might not. Do you need group messaging? Kind of that Slack, um, Microsoft Teams kind of functionality, web meetings, dialing conferencing. Do you need, you know, obviously if you have a phone system, you're gonna want an enterprise voice. But the question is how, what kind of sophisticated functionality do you need? You're gonna parse that out, just get what you need. And the next thing that becomes a question in envisioning what you want, Microsoft's uh, not only has Skype for Business, but now it seems like the future is Microsoft Teams. So an additional question becomes, which one is the good fit? And one of the things you're gonna find, so thinking a little bit about which one is your right fit, because either Skype for Business or Microsoft Teams will allow you to do phone system. And giving a little guidance, at the moment, Skype for Business has more mature voice features. Uh, Teams is a little more basic. Skype for Business also has an on-premises option. So if you're wanting to have you know, your own hardware, keeping this in, in-house because of perhaps really you know, secure need, security needs or something like that, you're gonna really be set for Skype for Business. And if we go on the Microsoft Teams side, if, you're, if your organization, your culture is, is oriented around a persistent Teams and group conversations, then Teams may be a better fit. Microsoft Teams is, is, is where Microsoft is really, really putting their emphasis right now. I mean, they're, that, that is where their focus is, and really that is kind of the future as well, although um, Skype for Business Server 2019 will also be coming out. So, in the long term, Skype, uh, Microsoft Teams is kind of the point solution. Um, at the moment, Skype for Business has a little more mature feature set. Another uh, yeah, thing. Yeah, and, and let me let, let me ask a question, and and forgive me if uh, you're going to kind of revisit the 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 similarities and and the yep. differences between the two paradigms. Two two quick thoughts. One is. Uh, I, I get bamboozled by Microsoft sometimes with the uh, plethora of storage uh, options. So I can do my OneDrive. I can do my OneDrive business. I can do my SharePoint. You know, I can do my uh, Microsoft Project even had almost sort of a store type capability in it. Um, Microsoft sometimes does that, right? And, yep. and so we're, we're right at one of those points. And... I, I mean, Precisely. I'm looking forward to learning from the may, – maybe I'm not – I don't even have a question. I'm just making a comment. But I'm interested in learning from this webinar today because I still think of Teams as a Slack competitor. I use Slack and came into the Slack world more under DevOps. And, and so when Teams came out, I was like, oh, okay. Okay, this competes with Slack. Um, so I, I don't know. Food for thought, Matt, is is you weave us through this journey. I'm, Absolutely. I'm both a I'm both a moderator and a student today. <laughs> Absolutely, and that that is that is actually a great question. And this next slide, we're going to dig into it more. And if there's still more questions when we're done, which there probably will be, you're fine. Answering. I'm going to say one of the things about Skype for Business or Teams is it's really about culture. 
organizational culture. If you if your if your needs are traditional, super traditional, all we want on the desk is a phone, Skype for Business or Teams may not be the solution for you. And that's that first option that I'm saying to have an NEC phone there. You know, you just want a dial phone number. You, you know, if that's your culture, that may be what you want. But if you're looking more in the direction of full featured calling where you're you're fine using a USB headset and a USB headset is really the optimal experience with Skype for business or for that matter teams if you're doing you know one to one conversations more than you're doing sitting in a team kind of environment then Skype for business is going to be more the piece and I, I you know obviously we can't draw in super deep here but then third if you need slap slack like group persistent chat with PC calling as a kind of basic add-on at the moment, then you're looking in the team's direction. You're kind of living more in the Slack group chat where you're typing messages, but then on occasion you're jumping into a you know an audio call or a video call or dialing out to someone else. At the moment, it's a moving target though. Microsoft is saying the end game is to have Microsoft Teams take care of of both the Skype for Business and the Microsoft, the Slack-like uh, functionality. So we're kind of in a transition. And what that means is there's a roadmap of getting from Skype, you know, so that Teams gets all the functionality that Skype has as well. So you have the persistent chat or the Slack-like chat plus the deep voice features. And at the moment, there's a decision point. Which one, which one is the best for you? In the long term, Teams is going to cover all the angles. Does that explain it for you there, Harry? Uh, yeah, yeah, it did. And just, just to, to, to kind of pile it on so you're seeing what I see. Uh, so first of all, if you don't mind, just quickly, how Hostetler uh, is looking forward to seeing you at Summit and – has uh, a number of compliments and his, his comments, Teams rocks and so on. But then we have Dwayne Miller, uh, who is basically articulating what, what I was trying to articulate. And it was along the lines of too, uh, too much change with the phone stuff at Microsoft. They float around great ideas, failed to execute easily for us, response point, then Skype. Now it's supposed to go to Teams as a platform. So that's a comment from Dwayne. Thank you, Dwayne. That's not really a question, but Matt, it, it, it arms you with what, what we're picking up in the chatter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm actually not, not watching the chat, so great, great up. Yeah, that, that is definitely a point. Um, it is, Teams is a culture change. Um, it is a different way of thinking. It's a different orientation, which is really in that, group chat kind of way. Another thing that at the moment, um, my opinion is the UI is not as optimized for ad hoc one-to-one -one conversations. Um, I did a did a podcast on this and at the moment, so um, we know there's things in the pipeline to get that one-to-one -one ad hoc. At the moment, Sky for Business is great at federated one-to-one -one inside, outside, your organization conversations. It's very nimble at making phone calls. My opinion is at the moment, Teams is a little, feels a little, um, little tykes kind of simplicity. Um, it, it's very simple, it's very basic. It's a little not as efficient, the UI. Now, one of the things in Skype for Business, you have the ability to pop out little windows. At the moment, Microsoft Teams is one window. You, you you switch between panels, which is not quite as optimized. Although I think going forward, it the the the, the Microsoft Teams group is looking to bring that all into one client. And in the meantime, there is a decision point. Absolutely get that. And one of the things there there's two documents, the official roadmap um, to when you know I kind of see it as Microsoft Teams, the features are coming. They keep coming from T, uh, Skype for Business over to Teams. So it's kind of, you know, it seems like every month goes by, you see more and more that Teams is doing what only Skype for Business did in the past. There's an official roadmap, which is, you know, more general, um, and it gives an overview of what's happening. Let me see if I have that up on my, yes, I do. 
So there's a there's a Microsoft roadmap which is is you know it gives the high level what they got done, what is coming, and essentially you can see this as features migrating or not migrating, they're staying in Skype for Business, but also coming to Microsoft Teams. So I have the the link there. Um, you can see it for the Microsoft roadmap. But then another a fellow MVP, Skype for Business MVP, uh, Luca Vitale, great guy, does really good work. Um, and you can see his blog there, Luca Vitale, wordpress.com. But he has done a spreadsheet that gives very fine toothed uh, answer to the question, does Teams do yet what Skype for Business already does? So you can see a column for the different versions of Skype for Business. And of course, the farther you get over to Teams, the less features are currently implemented. He updates this regularly, so it's a great document to see when the functionality you want will be in Microsoft Teams. So the the yeah, answer I love is those battle cards and what we'll do, Jenny. If you could make a note, uh, well, and, and and well, let me let me back up, uh, Matt. Will it be okay? to share your deck with the attendees in our thank you letters. So let's start with that. Absolutely, yep. Okay, so folks, we'll get you this and then you can get these links. Okay, please uh, continue, Matt. We we have a midpoint break in about two minutes if, if you wanna get to a handsome stopping point and then we'll uh, have another chat and then bring you back. Yep, not a problem. So maybe another thing we'll do, we'll try to go over the overview of co uh, call flows slide here. So another question envisioning what you want in the future, and it's related to this Microsoft Teams Skype for Business question as well, is what do your current call flows look like and what should they look like? Sometimes people just try to bring exactly what they had into the new solution, but it's kind of two questions. What do they currently, what, what do you currently need to do, but what should they look like in the new solution? Um, there will be a culture change. You know, if you're coming from a traditional phone system, even moving to Skype for Business, there's some adjustment in the way you think, and even more um, moving to Teams. It's 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 almost generational change there. But some questions are: What are your key phone numbers? So envisioning your new solution, take a look at your existing phone numbers because that tells you a lot about what you need. Auto attendance: Do you need auto attendance? Do you need hunt groups? Um, what kind of after hours call handling do you have? How do you how do you handle that? Um, conferencing numbers attached to that and just think about that call flow that you're going to need to do to, to envision what the new solution should look like and I'll with that I'll hand it over to you Harry for that break okay and we do have some questions uh, rolling in occasionally we have uh, some editorial from my, my main man Hal Hostetler thank you Hal and how clarified the MVP summit, just FYI, is uh, early March in, in, in the Seattle area, March 4th through 8th for MVPs. Matt, I'm assuming you'll be out here because I'd love yes. to see you and Hal. Um, Absolutely. You'll, you'll have yep. to come out to the lobby. I'm not allowed into the conference, but step on <laughs> out. <laughs> yes, um, planning to be there. And, you know, I think that you can actually meet people at the, what is it, Building 33? Am I saying that right? The, the yeah, uh, yeah. conference center. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so folks, if you're just joining us uh, today, this is the winter quarter for MSP Tech Talk, our popular academic series. Um, we enjoy the uh, the generous sponsorship of, of Fortinet, um, Cynix, and SureWeb. Again, much like public TV or public radio, we're bringing you the real content, and we have some community sponsors that support us. If you joined us late, we had an interesting partner conversation with Barry from Johannesburg, South Africa for Fortinet. And I also see, I know she's uh, probably not expecting me to say her name, but I, I see Emily out there in the background. Emily, you're welcome to stay on mute, but Emily is a driving force behind the Fortinet Accelerate 18 conference. February 26th through March 1st at the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. Here's the bad news, guys. Uh, it's actually sold out. They're reporting that is sold out, but that's their partner conference. Let's jump into, though, the next uh, conversation. If we could um, go ahead and bring up the, uh, the SureWeb slide, um, that would be great, because I want to talk to Simon. Simon, come online while we're bringing up that slide, because I, I have a, a bunch of questions for you with the academic conference you have underway. Are you prepared to talk about your conference? Sure. Hi, Harry. Pleasure to meet you. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I believe you're up in is it Ottawa City. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, not Montreal, not Toronto. Is it Ottawa City? Where are you today, sir? Yeah, it's Sherbrooke. It's between Montreal and Vermont, <laughs> close to the Vermont yeah. border. Oh well, cool. Well, then you're you're near the skiing in Stowe, Vermont. So that that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and actually, you, you talked about the Accelerate Conference, and uh, we're we're planning the the next conference that's going to be in September, October. Uh, and we pull a little bit of our partners, and and Montreal seems to be a, an interesting place they'd like to go. Um, oh and heck of yeah! Course, uh, for us, it's it's very uh, close, uh, but uh, it's something we, we were hesitating between the West Coast and Montreal, and it seems to be a good opportunity for partners to go north. There we go. And just to clarify for people, this is actually the the common use of the term accelerate. Fortinet is having their accelerate conference at the end hmm. of this month. SureWeb has. Uh, a similar use of the term. It's a popular term. That's fine. It's a popular yeah. term. But I want I want to talk to you about the online edition, folks. If you want to sign up for that, um, it's some primarily business lectures. Uh, yesterday, I attended the one with a sports psychologist. Um, tomorrow, I'm I'm attending. Simon, maybe you can tell me who's online for tomorrow. But before you do that, folks, if you go to smbnation.com, you'll see over in column three, you'll see the advertisement for the SureWeb Online Accelerate Conference for you to sign up complimentary. So, so Simon, if, if you don't mind, who, who who's speaking tomorrow? Because I'm going to be there, and I'll tell you why I'm going to be there in a minute. Yeah, it's Mary Weiss. Uh, so you see, she's a senior marketing executive and, and author. Uh, and she, um, I actually attended her session uh in uh, Toronto last uh, last year, and she uh, she has a very interesting take, which is a bit outside of the box on on the classic lead generation funnel and pipeline uh, that you probably know, and like you know, you need to do some content marketing and then generate leads, and then you get prospects and you convert, and and she she uh, she has an interesting take on it. Um, a different uh, perspective that that's going to open your eyes, I think, and it's going to uh, make you ask a lot of questions and and do things a bit differently when you come back uh, to your uh, to your marketing activities. Um, we know, like we we talk to uh, a lot of partners that we work with have <clears throat> understand that the customer uh, are the customers are changing their their journey is more digital than ever and they they need help. To uh, to understand that new reality and, and execute on that to make sure that they stay on top of their game, because um, of course I'd say and you can correct me uh, from your community, uh, Harry, but it's still a, a a good relationship or partner or, or a relationship uh, meeting face to face handshaking um, part of the business. Uh, that marketing is still very dominant. Uh, for MSP, but uh, it's changing, and, and we all know it's changing fast. So you need to you need to stay on top if you want to stay competitive and, and continue growing your business. Well, on that on that specific comment, um, it's it's like some job statistics I recently saw, and and I didn't really know it was this. I'm going to say it was this bad, but. Apparently, when when someone hunting for a job goes to a website and they see a job opportunity and they fill out a form, um, that's only uh, only five to fifteen percent of jobs are filled that way. <laughs> let's say let's say eighty five percent of jobs are through networking personal relationships, person-to-person -person conversations. Yeah. And and I would offer it's the same for business development with MSPs. And so, you know, you, you, you guys have been carrying the flag on that. And then it's what's kind of cool about your positioning is, you know, you're both business speak, which, which again, I would attribute uh, your online conference, a lecture tomorrow, a couple lectures next week. Um, I would attribute that more to the business speak this time, mm -hmm. but you, you also, you, yeah, the technical chops, right? I mean, the, yeah. the, you're 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 in a technical um, profession. But Simon, one last point, and this is why I'm attending, and maybe you can explain this better than I can. But uh, apparently, if you attend all of the lectures for the online conference, you get a, a certificate, 
And what I like about that is I'm a big believer of gamification. Mm -hmm. um, and, and an example of that is uh, Spiceworks has a community. And if you go up on their forums and you help answer questions, you, you, you get little chili peppers, right? Yes. You, you, you get these little badges. Yeah. People love gamification. What was the idea behind um, the, if, if I attend all the lectures, which I intend to, I'm going to get a certificate. What was the thinking there? Um, I'd say the main the main point is one to to get you more focused when you're you're spending time because it's really spending time to attend to, uh, or to try to educate yourself and and level up your game. Um, so you you're more focused because you know it's going to be a certification. And to correct you a little bit, it's not uh, by default that you get that certificate. You need oh. to do an exam. Uh -oh. Oh, so, oh my. <laughs> so that, yeah, so that's a, another important point. You do need to do an exam. It's it's pretty straightforward, but honestly, if you I tried to have to had just uh, the screenshot for a winning previously to all the sessions and, and you can't you can't uh, successfully do it if even if it's just um um, you know, select box. If you can't, uh, if you didn't watch the we the videos, correct. Um, correct. So we did that in a past uh, master class that we had, and we're we're starting to do a lot of video session training. We have one. You, you were talking on Teams. Uh, we have one Team Pro series um, where you can. If you want to know everything there is to know on, on Teams today, um, you we have like 20 short, two, three minutes video that you can do and then run the exam and get certified. Um, so take a look at this, ShareWeb Team Pro Series. And that's really something that's working. Partners love it. And um, yeah, it, it, there's kind of a... A great feeling when you, you can finish something. It's like, okay, I've gone through that. I've I, I'm now I've leveled up my skills and I have something I can print. I can prove that I've done it. Well, Simon, I'll end up, and, and, and thank you for the segue to teams, Matt, we're going to bring you right back, but I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try a joke, Simon. I hope this translates. You and I have had some fun conversations, but, but the thing I like about gamification is I guess I attribute it to my esteem issues. And so mm -hmm. when I earn a certificate, <laughs> I feel better about myself, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, folks. Hey, thanks, Simon. Um, we Bye. have a poll up. Uh, which of the following resources would be most useful in helping you resell cloud solutions successfully? You have a choice of ready-to-use marketing campaigns, sales and technical training, accessible expertise, direct support services, migration, et cetera. While you're answering that, uh, next Wednesday and the following Wednesday are the last two lectures for winter quarter before spring break, as it were. And we're going to have, uh, quite, quite frankly, we're going we're gonna to zero in a little bit on Azure um, the next two weeks, especially that last session on Azure and SMB, and we're going to hit some issues head on about cost and so on. Jenny, go ahead and close the poll. And Matt, you're just a few seconds away from coming back online, my friend, and the poll results were uh, winning was 48% accessible expertise, second, sales and technical training at 33%, finally, ready to use marketing campaign, campaigns at a distant 19% in third place. Matt, you're back on, my friend. Go ahead and All right. let's jump into those slides. The, the audience is literally chomping at the bit. Okie doke. All right. Well, we talked about envisioning your call flows. And another thing that is good to envision is how, how will the phone system be accessed? Are you going to be using PCs, Macs, tablets, phones? Are you going to need an attendant console? Um, we make an attendant console for Skype for Business. We see it as something very often a piece that's needed, that person that sits there, answers the calls, and transfers it on to someone else. And or do you also need room systems? In other words, hardware in your conference room that lets you get into a, either an audio conference or a video conference. So envisioning the system, I think it's good to think about what are you gonna what 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 devices are going to access this and and get you into the voice. 
And then another thing that we think at the envisioning, and we're still only in the vision, we'll go faster as we get towards the end, but another thing is envisioning what devices you're gonna use. A device is super important. And a thing you're gonna think about is that you use a Skype for Business certified device for the best experience. Um, and we'll drill into that a little more later on. But what users are gonna use headsets? Um, what vendors? Do you need wired or wireless? And at this moment, just you don't have to get like model numbers, but think about what kind of what kind of genre of device, audio device you're going to need. Or are you going to? Does your culture require that you have some IP phones or desk phones? Who's going to actually need one? Uh, what types will be needed? And then moving on, thinking once again about this complete uh, phone system solution you're going to need. Determine the, any additional add-ons you might need. You know, do you need call recording? There is some recording in Skype for Business and Teams, but not a solution to record every last call. Um, do you need a contact center? Um, we are we actually are developing a contact center for Office 365. And uh, Harry, you talked about gamification. Actually, that's one of our pillars. Um, that it's just fun to use, and and you have these in the, these things that incentivize so gamification. But do you need a contact center, a tenant console? Do you need to 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 support overhead paging? Is that something that's needed? Portable phones. These are some solutions that Microsoft is going to lean on uh, third party menu, uh, third party vendors to provide. And when you envision a solution, just think about those items. Uh, they will be outside the the Microsoft provided part. Well and, and and Matt what I would add and I am I am a real uh the, 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 this is a big big deal to me and when I've worked with uh, external clients and startups I bring my own headset. A high I have a high quality Sennheiser headset and there's reasons mm -hmm. for that. I had Sennheiser headphones as a kid listening to rock music. Um so I, I, I'm on Team Sennheiser. I mean, always will be. Uh, but, yep. but the point and, is, I pay, Sen right? I, go ahead. Yes, yeah, Sennheiser is a Skype for Business certified vendor. So, yep, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, they are. And, and but you know, the point is, I guess every entrepreneur has some degree of ADHD. That's what makes us successful. And so, I right now I'm pacing with my headset on. So I need the range to pace, right? The the. Yep. Having a headset with a six-foot cord to a desk would absolutely be death to me, my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and you're bringing up the point that that endpoint device, whether it be desk phone or USB headset, wired or wireless, it's super significant. Some people forget how significant that is to making a solution that people love. Oh, yeah. And uh, you, you bring I, – I, I bring my own – Every, every gig I do in the private sector, I bring my own headset and hook it in. Yep. All right. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Let's, you I, I think you're a portable phone on your screen. <laughs> yep. You are, you are exactly bringing up my point. So determine some of those additional pieces that you might need for the solution. And then another thing, and we're not here to talk about dollars and cents, but just bringing up the point that think about the licenses you might need, or you may have what you already need, but sit down with your sit down with Microsoft, figure out what you need uh, to get a whole solution. And now we're transitioning to assess. We, we envisioned what kind of solution. Now assess where you're at. Where's your infrastructure currently at? And there's a couple of places you can be in relation to Office 365 phone system. You might only have Active Directory. Um, that, that, and that's kind of a, you know, a clean, you're, you're just starting. You might have Exchange on-premises. You might have Exchange and Skype for Business on-premises. You, you might have started the transition into the cloud and have Exchange online. Um, and you know, this is, if it's a large company, this is more important. A smaller company is not quite as big of an issue. Um, but thinking about where you're at, Exchange and Skype for, so another, another place you might be is you have Exchange online, Skype for Business online, but you're just using it for IM and presence and you wanna start bringing in the full phone system. That's not an uncommon piece either. And so once you determine where you're at, now we're assessing our technology, assessing where we're, you know, assessing where we're at, 
Another piece is Active Directory and getting your Active Directory ready to be synchronized with Office 365. And this is not, not particularly a Skype for Business or Teams issue, but it, it, it's kind of related. Active Directory, we notice in our implementation, is often neglected. Um, it's not uncommon to have a lot of dead users in there. And another thing we, we specifically think about, organize, our organization information is out of date. Managers, related contacts, phone numbers, departments are, are not, since they're not really up in front of you, people let that get out of, um, out of date and neglected. And the interest, interesting thing is in Skype for Business, that information becomes really available to users. So if you have hundreds of users and they're out of date and you roll into Skype for Business and suddenly everyone can easily see this Active Directory information, it can really lead to some not landing perfectly. So if you're moving that way, think about your Active Directory. Another thing that we notice also is your, your uh, UPN, your, your domain name, needs to be a publicly routable domain. So if you started out, you installed on, on premise, and you have uh, company at local.com or a lo at, at local, it's not going to work. It has to be a, a publicly routable domain. And another thing is if, if you've been on premise for a long time, you have your own servers. It's not uncommon that Active Directory, so you had small business server way back when, and as things came up through, you can get some errors accumulating in the Active Directory. We, our, our guidance is use the Office 365 ID fix tool to see what the errors are. And uh, if you would talk to CJ, he would say then fix it manually. But that tool, Office 365 ID fix tool, will let you know what you need to to think about fixing. And the last thing on an Active Directory related, related to phone system is review security. Uh, when you move into the cloud, uh, everything is facing the cloud clearly. Think about password policies. If you want to use multi-factor authentication to make yourself more secure, think about security just a little bit. And hey, Matt, let's go uh, yeah yeah let's go back yet another slide uh, where uh, you had mobile phones and you kind of had a list of things oh boy it was a there we go I think it was here uh, Michael Cabral is asking and Michael I'm I'm going to try and get this right so forgive me and you're welcome to type in a correction he's about how how about the app can I bring the extension to my mobile phone. So we're essentially asking about the inner interchange, interconnection between a mobile phone and, uh, and, 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 and Skype for Business. Yes, so if I'm understanding the, correctly, the, the question correctly, yes. So if you have the Skype for Business mobile app on your phone and they dial your, ex and they dial you, it will come to your mobile phone and ring there. Um, yeah, and that that would be using data, and I think you can even if you want to use voice. In other words, have it call out onto your mobile number. It can do that as well. So to answer your question, yes. Okay, and it looks like it looks like I got it right. Okay, go ahead and fast forward to where you were, and uh, we'll continue, Matt. All right, CJ, do you want to go over this identity management slide? Sure, I can do that, Matt. Okay. So we'll let CJ talk about identity man management, some things you might want to think about there. Not specifically phone system, but it comes up. So go ahead. Sure. So once you have your Active Directory ready to be synchronized, you use you can use the Azure AD Connect tool from Microsoft. This is a tool that you can install um, on one of your servers in your environment, and this will tie your on-prem on-premises Active Directory to Office 365. This is a tool that will synchronize your users and your groups, et cetera, to Office 365. And um, you can go ahead and, there you go, Matt. Um, so there's different authentication methods that you can use with Azure AD Connect. And this directly affects your end users. So this is fairly critical to think about um, when you're deploying or before you deploy uh, Skype for Business online. <clears throat> All right, so the first method that you can use 
is to synchronize the user's passwords directly to Office 365. So in this scenario, uh, the user is synchronized every time that the user's Active Directory password is changed on premises. That password gets synchronized to Office 365. And so when the user signs into Skype for Business, uh, Exchange Online, the passwords will be the same for a seamless uh, experience. And then the second option there, go ahead, Matt, is a pass-through authentication. So some companies do not want their password hashes to be synchronized to Office 365 for security reasons. There is another method that you can use. Um, that is the pass-through authentication. Um, Office 365 will communicate directly with Azure AD to connect to authenticate the user. Um, there is there's some pros and cons to each one of these. We won't get into many details. The third one is Active Directory Federation Services. Um, this usually requires a few more servers. Um, originally, this was typically used to create the seamless sign-on experience. Um, it, it, you have your own login page to Office 365. You authenticate through your on-premise Azure or Active Directory Federation service, and then it will sign you into Office 365. Another thing here is single sign-on. So as I said previously, this was typically accomplished previously with Active Directory Federation services. Now Microsoft enabled another feature in Azure AD Connect. And you can go ahead, Matt, to the next uh, option there, called Seamless Single Sign-On. You can use this with password hash synchronization and also pass-through authentication. So this will uh, enable that seamless sign-on experience um, the same way, almost the same way as Active Directory Federation services. So if you're not familiar with, with uh, seamless sign-on, uh, you take it for granted when you have Exchange on-premise. When you set up a new Outlook profile, you basically click next, next, next. You don't have to enter a username and password. Um, that is the seamless sign-on experience. So when you have a user in Office 365, um, you can have that same seamless sign-on experience without the user having to enter a username and password to authenticate. And this can be in the browser, in Skype for Business, in, in uh, Outlook, et cetera. All right. Anything else there? I think that's all. Okay. Okay. Well, and hey, Matt, if you don't mind, we're we're kind of hitting the the next break, folks. Uh, take another sip out of your water bottle or your coffee cup. Uh, we're going to go ahead and again, our because of our community sponsors, so Fortinet, Cynix, and SureWeb, that allows us to bring you Winter Quarter. And so we're going to catch a quick video from Cynix. Jenny's going to cue that up. Then I'm going to talk with Brent for a moment. But and there we go, Matt. If you have a chance uh, to bring back the uh, the slide for Cynix, and I believe uh, I'm speaking with Brent. Uh, Brent, are you out there today? No, it's not Brent today. It is Eli today. Oh well, Eli, forgive me. I see. Look You're at me. You're fine. <laughs> Don't hey, you worry about questions. it. All right, couple couple questions for you, because like I say, what I've enjoyed with our academic lecture series is the synergy between Fortinet and Cynix, uh, that in fact, uh, people could go to Cynix to, to buy their Fortinet solutions. Now, um, I'm unclear on two things. One is, and forgive me, is Cynix a global corporation? Or are you only the United States? How, how, how does Cynix play geographically? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So uh, Cinex is a global uh, corporation. We do have uh, branches in other countries, other continents around the world. Um, obviously, my play is in the United States and uh, our interactions is within the United States for me personally. However, our corporation has global reach. And so for anybody reaching out from overseas or in different continents or whether you are in the safari in Africa, there's usually a Cinex close by for you. 
All right, so you passed the test because indeed we started we started the hour with Barry from Johannesburg, South Africa, who is a Fortinet partner. So, so in all seriousness, Barry, and we do have other listeners right now in Europe and Asia, which is why I always do the good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and it's boy howdy, it's morning in parts of Asia right now. Um, but the 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 idea being that they could go to their Cynics representative and and discover how to purchase Fortinet equipment. Is that fair? Very fair statement. Very true. Absolutely. Okay, great. And then with respect to Cynix, uh, why don't let, let's let's just do do sort of a mini lightning round here, and then we'll get back to Matt Landis. But we're in 2018. We're in the first calendar quarter. Uh, but before you know it, approaching mid quarter. And uh, what's on what's on your report card in 2018? I mean, we we have the CSP program, but what what is interesting to you and what are you talking with partners about in 18 well obviously csp will continue to be a big push from uh from our side over here at cynex um obviously i don't know if anybody else knew about it we did have a recent um addition of the westcon com store to our uh to our product lines over here at cynex we are very excited speaking about phone systems and such to have Wow. Various yeah, I didn't vendors. know that. Yeah, uh, various vendors are going to be added to our product line card. We are very excited to have that addition. Areas that I do not focus on since I am Microsoft specific. However, the Cisco's of the world, Symantex, obviously, and then Polycoms when it comes to phones. Things like that are all different kinds of additions that we are excited about. Azure is a huge push. The different solutions and uh, solution sets that we are going to offer on that end, as well as various Cinex specific programs, including Capture the Cloud that made mention in the video, as well as the cloud community, which I believe there is a, uh, I believe there's a PDF on the, uh, on this WebEx about that as well. So that's what we're looking forward to coming into 2018. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Eli, will will I enjoy, or to be determined, will I enjoy your company next week and the week after? Because we are taking a left turn and going off into the land of Azure in the next two lectures. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Uh, hopefully, I am going to be the one who is uh, chosen for that. Uh, you can understand that we have Azure experts that might have a little bit better of a foothold when that time comes, that they might have that first step. But if I can at least be an attendee, even if I'm not your primary speaker, I would definitely enjoy that as well. All right. Well, you've got one week to master Azure, my friend. Thank you. For <laughs> yeah, it's plenty of time, right? Isn't it? Exactly. Thanks for dropping by. Matt, we have an audience that wants to talk to Lefany, so um, let's, let's jump right back into it, my friend. Oh, we have a poll. Forgive me. We have a poll. Do you currently have a Microsoft Cloud practice? Yes, no, I'm not sure. Pretty easy to answer. Just one more time. We are underwritten by the generosity of Fortinet, Cynix, and SureWeb next week and the week after Wednesday noon for the final two lectures of spring quarter will be uh, more focused on Azure. Jenny, go ahead and close the poll. Give the talking stick back to Matt. We're just phew, so much content, so little time. <laughs> All right. We're ready to roll here. Yep. Okay, so the next step in assessing your your condition to handle voice or phone system, real-time media, is assessing your network. Is your network ready to handle real-time traffic load? Uh, in the past, Microsoft has kind of said we have protocols that can make up for bad networks, and um, our guidance is make sure that your network can handle real-time uh, so a network assessment is essential. Uh, packet loss, latency, jitter, is it is it going to handle it? And this doesn't need to be the end. This doesn't need to be something that's just so hard you can't get started. There's actually some free tools. You can start with a basic assessment, and there's some free tools. One is Microsoft themselves has the Microsoft Network Assessment Tool. This is a command line tool. You can Google it and go get it. Even better, there is the Network Assessor for Skype Teams Online. And this is really a, a you can see the URL where to get the thing. It's, it's, a, 
a GUI based tool. You just download it, start it running, and let it run. Um, it's it, it's free, no cost. And what it'll do, you just let it run for you know a day, a week, and let it just gather information about how your network would handle a call if someone made one over it. And the thing to be to be clear on this assessor tool, it's it's a free tool, as, along with Microsoft's. It's a free tool, but it lets you know what would happen if you did one call. It's not a load tester it's just how is our network doing and you can see on the test that I have on the screenshot every time there's a red dot that means something was not inside parameters in other words Skype for business or teams would have not had a good call even with one uh, one phone call going much less if you had 10 going over this connection so assess your network Make sure it, it doesn't have to be a super complicated thing. Generalist IT guy can do this um, and get started. If it does not pass, then you should need to dig deeper. You can um, address it if you have expertise in-house or you can get more in-depth assessment tools to help you. And there are certified vendors to do that. IR Prognosis, Nectar, perspective and modality is a, a Skype for business partner that has some tools that they can help you very specifically in in rooting out where these problems are. You know, on a simple uh, SMB, smaller organization, they might just have one site. Um, bigger organizations may have, you know, obviously all kinds of branches. Um, it really, you have to have a good network to handle real real time net uh, real time traffic load. And then another thing to think about assessing, determine where the best place is to put your phone numbers. Can telephone numbers be ported to Microsoft for 100% cloud solution? Um, we live in, in Lancaster, it's a, it's a rural area. We're about an hour west of Philly. And not all numbers, not all telephone companies, numbers can be ported. So to assess yourself, you wanna know, can you port these numbers? And uh, you can do that before you do it. You can verify portability. There's an email. Um, you can send the number there and they'll let you know if you can port it. Another thing to be aware of is service numbers versus user numbers. And really a simple way to think about that is high volume numbers and user numbers, which are less high volume. So typically a service number is a number that's gonna be assigned to an auto attendant, You know, kind of that main number people call in call queues, auto attendance, and conference bridges. And um, only service numbers can be assigned to multiple users as an outbound caller ID. So uh, I don't know about all locations, but in, in, in our county, a lot of people like to have uh, at least smaller organizations, one number they dial out as, and uh, maybe someone can call them directly, but when they call out, it's that main number. And a service number, you need to decide which numbers are which. And then moving on to uh, a detailed selection of USB devices and IP phones. Once again, you're gonna want to have a certified Skype for business device and there are phones, plenty of them, but that's where you're gonna wanna start. But then dig into what ha headset you want. As Harry already noted, it's a really personal thing and, and we think it's worthwhile. We actually usually, if we're doing a, uh, implementation consulting, we will schedule time to visit with the users and actually put devices in front of them and let them play with it. It's worthwhile taking your time and getting that right because that's the device they'll experience the phone system through. Some of the headsets that we've had good experience with, Plantronic Savvy Series, the Jabra 900 and, and Harry Sennheiser, DW and SD Series, that's just some personal experience. Um, one of the things we've noticed is that the most, just because a headset has more functionality and features doesn't mean that means better experience. Actually, in some cases, more features and knobs can actually make the experience worse because they don't know, users don't know what they're doing and it gets set wrong and then things don't work. So sometimes the, the Jabra 900 is a really simple USB deck headset and they just work and you can hardly mess them up. Um, so take the time. It's worthwhile sitting, sitting down and really sifting through that. And then another item is Polycom handsets. Um, of course, there's, there's VVX, very popular, um, but there's other vendors, uh, Yealink, 
And once again, a, 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 a desk phone is once again a very personal, uh, the way people interact with them is, is quite personal. Do they want, you know, some questions that come up, do they, are they okay with touchscreen? You know, if they're the, you know, smartphone cultural, they're okay with a smartphone, they're probably okay using the Skype for Business client or maybe an IP phone with a touchscreen. But if they're in that traditional mindset, they're probably going to want a phone with buttons. Um, so there's a lot of differences. It's worthwhile sitting down and getting that correct. Audio codes uh, makes a makes a certified IP phone as well. And I say perhaps trial some devices. You know, it depends what size your organization is, but if you have any size whatsoever, I, it's really important to have them in hand, play with them. It's tactile. It's it's feeling them, touching them. You know, and, and seeing what you like. Yeah, and and Matt, let me just add to that uh, that I have known, boy, back when I did that book and just other other things in life, but. Uh, Distributors can sometimes be a good source for a loaner of, of a uh, device for you to test. Yeah. Um, you know, depends on the distributor, depends on this, depends on that. E Eli, I, I see you're still on, and I know it's not your area of expertise with the Westcon acquisition, but has, has Cynix been able to do that in the past, that a partner can borrow some devices to test? Oh, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a that's been something that um, has been very vendor specific. So I can't say you know mm -hmm. for everybody, but you know you'll have people come into the come into the office and they'll um, you know vendors and and you can talk to them and they can say you know what if, if you think that this would be beneficial, let's get a couple of devices that can be checked out. Let the people use them, see how they like them, and if that is indeed what would uh, you know be the best fit, then obviously that would turn into an opportunity we'd love to discuss. But that is vendor specific, mm -hmm. and I and yes, it 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 is something that is what I would consider um, more common than people think of a practice of these vendors. All right, thank you, Eli. Matt, back to you. Yes, yeah, that that's great if a vendor can help you. And yes, uh, Cynix does do you, uh, Skype for Business certified devices, Polycom phones, and I don't know what all their line is, but they certainly certainly handle those items. So moving on to uh, porting numbers or how you handle that. So the question is, where's the best place to host them? If you can port the telephones numbers to Microsoft, you you you. Then you can do that. You have a 100% cloud solution. But if you can't, there is another way to get those numbers into Office 365 phone system, and that is using Cloud Connector Edition. And what Cloud Connector Edition is is hardware. Essentially, you you know, very, very, just saying it very simply, you plug your your telephone lines or PRI lines into this box, and then this box gets plugged into Microsoft's cloud. And uh, that's saying it kind of barbaric. At entry level cost, when you get the servers that are the virtual servers that are required, the gateway hardware and the OS is is something like ten thousand. So it's a there's there's an entry level cost there to get in to bring your own telephone lines, but you can do that. It's called Cloud Connector Edition. And if you uh, another option is if you started with Skype for Business on premises Skype for Business server hardware that can also be used uh, if you configure hybrid. So likely the optimal solution is just having it purely hosted by Microsoft. In some cases, you can't do that. Then you're going to need to look at a cloud connector edition. So firewalls and ports. If you have a tightly locked down system assessing where you're at, you're going to need to make sure that they can get out through the firewall on a couple ports. They're listed there. I won't read them off. I see our time is getting away. So just make, if you're really, if you're, you know, financial or legal and you're really locked down, there's some ports you'll need to see to. And, uh, and then we get to deploying. And Harry, where did, what time did we want to end up at here? Just so I know how quick to go here. Yeah, yeah, we end at one thirty. Um, I that's actually a really good question because uh, yeah, Matt, I live in the real world, and um, God bless Jenny Hallmark over in the radio control room. We typically end at one thirty. Now we can go to overtime, 
And then that will be uh, Jennifer Hallmark directing over time and asking the questions. So that's fine. Um, but but, fine. We're both, <laughs> but but both are true. One thirty is the traditional stop time. But last week we almost went to two p.m. and Jennifer Hallmark will take the night shift. Please yeah. continue. Okay. Well, we'll try to zip through here because we're getting pretty. We're get just about ready to land here. So configuring right. it, how to configure the solution, an overview. You, you you know user setup and assign them a license. You're likely going to set up some auto attendance call queues, and uh, you can do this using the portal, a web portal, or PowerShell. So just giving a quick screenshot of how the screen looks. You can select a user, turn on the functionality you want. Not complicated. This a generalist IT can usually do. Not a problem there. And then we're going to show you auto attendant. And how to configure that it's really straightforward you say you want an auto tenant you know give it a phone number one of those service numbers high volume numbers what options you want to go to where not really that complicated and then installing the client software um, you're gonna there, there's two clients for Skype for business. One is the basic and one of the full. You're really gonna want to use for for a voice phone system. You want the full Skype for business. We get the question all the time. There's a basic client that's meant for instant message and presence and not voice. So don't try to use the basic one for voice. People sometimes try that to save a couple bucks, but in the end, uh, you don't get your boosters landing nice and smoothly if you do that. So and then go live. And that means you're going to initiate a phone number port before go live day. I have here E enabling minus seven days. Um, so you're going to have to work with that a little. Not all, it doesn't always happen perfectly just when you want it. So you're going to have to get a little head start on that. Figure out what your go live day is, figure backward a little bit. Assign those numbers. As soon as you ask for them to port it, you can assign them to your auto attendance and call queues. So if, if the phone company does something a little, a little surprising and does them real quick. They, if you if you have them assigned to your auto attendant the instant you ask to be ported, when they if they do it sooner than you think, they'll be going to correct auto attendants and call queues and users. And on that go live day, once once the numbers port, test, make sure things go where you want them to, and be available for user challenges. Um, there's probably going to be some culture change if they're coming from another phone system, Skype for Business, just be available for that. And then for the MSPs, this is not set it and then just walk away and hope everything goes good. No, there's going to be some monitoring. And uh, Skype for Business, the voice very specifically, has a couple reports um, to help you there. There is the, um, the admin center reports. And then there's also the Skype for Business call analytics. And this one's a really, this is new, it's just in preview, um, but it really lets you drill into where the problem happened. A, a very common scenario is, uh, we just had one this morning actually. Uh, someone said, hey, we had a call, there, it, there was a problem going on, and uh, we're, wh where's this problem? So we could go click on the call, and I'm just trying to think if I have this on my screen right now here, just to show. You know what, I think I'll just go with what's on the screen there. But what you can do is, is select a call and then click on down to the point of seeing what headset they were using or if they were using one that they shouldn't have been using or was the network okay? Were they on Wi-Fi? You don't have to get the customer to tell you this. You just type in the user, select the date and time, the call date and time, and then you can really drill into that call um, and see where the problem happened. And there is another tool, the um, Microsoft Call Quality Dashboard. The call analytics tool is really when you want to drill down to a specific call. The, dash, the Microsoft Call Quality Dashboard is more of an overview. How have things been going? So if you're MSP, these are some, some good tools you can start to get into your pack. And then a last thing. Once again, this is not specifically phone system related, um, but security monitoring. Uh, if you're moving fully to the cloud, you're gonna wanna watch that security. And, and a great thing in Office 365 to check that is securescore.office.com. And this thing just gives your Office 365 implementation a score. And uh, this is, once again, this is ongoing. If you know, if your security is all set up and good today, tomorrow things may have happened that 
that that made it go downhill. So security monitoring on an ongoing basis is a good thing to do. And uh, if you take those steps, you will get a you you can get a good impressive dual booster landing with your phone system. So I think that ends the presentation part and Q and A. Okay, dokie. And what I would add, just <clears throat> you said one of my favorite words. You know, on my report card in 2018 is the field of analytics. I, I gave a lecture on it two weeks ago as part of our uh, MSP Tech Talk. Um, and folks, if if you know you're either lonely or crazy or whatever, and want to get your head into this area specific to caller analytics. It's a different area. Um, Matt, I'd encourage you to do the same, but just uh, peruse and cruise around Marchex. Um, Marchex.com is a call analytics firm out of Seattle. Now, they, they march to a different drummer. So they're going to be working with uh, T-Mobile, and they're going to be helping T-Mobile with incoming calls for people who might like T-Mobile service. And very quickly, blocking calls that are robocalls or fraudulent calls. Uh, apparently, that's a big problem in the industry for inbound sales. So mm -hmm. a little bit different animal. Um, but, you know, as they said in uh, what is it, my my Big Fat Creek wedding, and the guy says at the wedding that we're, we're all fruits and we're all related. So <laughs> with that said, um, let's See, folks, use the Q&A feature to ask your questions. Uh, we are, uh, quite, quite frankly, a little bit light on telephony questions. So I don't know if Dwayne Miller, if you have another observation, Hal Hostetler, uh, Michael Cabral, um, if you guys would like to ask some questions. Folks, everybody should use this opportunity to ask your questions. And then as a special bonus today, uh, Jenny is is going to take. We're, we're going to have a different ending today. Jenny is going to take us out with the 40 net video of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Since you're from the great state of Pennsylvania, 40 net supports the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then more importantly, Matt, I'm assuming you enjoyed the game last Sunday. Thanks again, Matt, for that great presentation and everybody who joined us this week.